James Holmes, Aurora Massacre, the insane mass shooting murderer. One decade on from the notorious Aurora Massacre that saw a gunman open fire in a movie theater packed with Batman fans as they sat with their popcorn in the dark, those affected by the tragedy are bracing for the grim anniversary of their losses. So what is the curious case of James Holmes? What led to his Aurora theater shooting? Find out by watching this video. Welcome to AF Crime, the channel that brings you fascinating crimes all around the world. If you're interested in this kind of content, then this channel is for you. Make sure to like this video, click on the subscribe button, and turn on the notification bell to keep you updated on our recent uploads. Now, let's get right into the video and investigate the crime scene of James Holmes. So let's start off with who was James Holmes. James Holmes was born in 1987 and was originally from Riverside, California. His neighbors said he lived alone and kept to himself. He studied neuroscience at the University of California in 2010. Holmes was academically gifted and a PhD candidate at the University of Colorado Medical Center, but withdrew in June 2012. His lawyer said he had mental health issues growing up and tried to kill himself age 11. Police say he bought the guns used in the incident legally at two sporting goods stores and purchased more than 6,000 rounds of ammunition online. So, how did James Holmes carry out this attack? The shooting was on July 20th, 2012 in Aurora, Colorado, at a midnight screening of the hotly anticipated Batman movie, The Dark Knight Rises. The Century 16 movie theater was packed with film fans of all ages. James Holmes, who was then 24, slaughtered 12 people and wounded 70 more when he stormed a midnight screening of The Dark Knight Rises on July 20th, 2012. In the two months leading up to the shooting, Holmes had purchased four guns, an AR-15 assault rifle, a Remington 12-gauge shotgun, a 40 caliber Glock handgun, and another pistol from local shops and more than 6,000 rounds of ammunition, police said at the time. All of the weapons and ammunition were purchased legally. Shortly after the film started, the spree killer propped an emergency exit open with a tablecloth holder, went to his car, changed into protective gear and a gas mask, and retrieved his guns. Holmes walked back into the theater and threw two gas canisters into the audience. Many in the audience thought it was a publicity stunt until he began spraying the crowd with the shotgun, then the assault rifle, and finally the pistol. A witness said he went outside and shot people as they ran. Cops apprehended Holmes in his car behind the cinema within minutes of the shooting. He told them that he was the Joker. He donned protective gear, hurled gas canisters into the venue before unleashing rounds from an assault rifle, a shotgun, and a pistol. Some moviegoers later said that they thought at first that the event was a publicity stunt for the film, but as the movie played, the real life in front of the screen was more horrific and bloodier than any crime unfolding in the script, with bodies strewn in the seats and maimed survivors left fighting for their lives. Holmes, who had studied neuroscience but had recently withdrew as a PhD candidate, was arrested outside the theater shortly after the attack. His dark hair was dyed neon orange as a sick homage to the evil green-haired Joker character in the movie, according to ABC News, citing police sources. The convict will now face 164 counts of murder, as well as attempted murder for his role in the Colorado movie theater massacre. James Holmes, who has been charged with 24 counts of killing of the 12 people who were killed, which is two charges per victim. The first charge is a first degree premeditated murder charge, and the second charge is first degree murder using extreme indifference to human life. That is, by creating a dangerous situation in that people were likely to die. He is also charged with more than 100 counts of attempted murder for the other movie theater patrons, and even those who were not injured, because his alleged actions were vicious enough that he could have caused the deaths of many. For instance, even if he had not shot someone, a person could have died from trampling in the mayhem and from a fatal reaction to the tear gas, or from a heart attack or stroke due to the stress of the attack. In addition, there were 10 more charges filed in September 2013 to account for movie theater patrons in the adjacent theater who were exposed to gunfire. The prosecutors have been seeking the death penalty and have even rejected a deference offer for life in prison without the possibility of any kind of parole. 
Holmes pleaded not guilty due to the insanity, which under Colorado law means he acknowledges committing the acts, but believe he wasn't responsible as he couldn't tell right from wrong. If James is convicted of murder, he could be sentenced to execution, which prosecutors want, or for life in prison without parole. But if James is found not guilty because of insanity, then he would be committed indefinitely to the state mental hospital. Now, that means if he were someday declared to be sane and he could be potentially released, even though that would be unlikely. Moreover, under the law, the jury will determine whether Holmes was sane or insane. And so if they find Holmes guilty, then the court will decide on the sentence, death or life without parole. Also, the judge seated around 12 jurors plus 12 alternates who would replace any jurors who had to be dismissed for health or other reasons. And all 24 will not know if they are jurors or alternates until the deliberations start. At that point, the remaining will be dismissed. Holmes, who is now age 34, is currently locked up at the United States Penitentiary Allenwood, or USP Allenwood in Pennsylvania, according to reports citing the Federal Bureau of Prisons records. The high security prison, which only houses men and is around 165 miles northwest of Philadelphia. He is considered an at-risk prisoner under threat of attack from other inmates, with one known assault taking place not long into his prison term. The murderer had faced 165 charges and the death penalty during his trial, but he pleaded insanity and his life was spared by the jury. Instead, he received a sentence of 12 lifetimes in prison in 2015 and thousands more years added on top of that. He will die behind bars. He was originally sent to Colorado State Penitentiary, the highest security prison in the state. But in January 2016, he was secretly transferred to a prison out of state with no information given about why he was moved. Officials also refused to disclose his new location, sparking fury from survivors and grieving families of the victims. Some even launched legal battles, arguing that they had a right to know where their attacker was being kept at any time. A state committee was divided on the issue, although in 2017 it said the corrections department should have kept the victims better informed and provided them with more detail about why this location was not being revealed publicly. It only emerged months later that the reason he had been moved was due to an attack on him by another prisoner. The assault in Colorado 2015 happened while Holmes was housed in isolation, but despite authorities' precautions, another inmate was able to slip through an open security gate and attack him. It is not clear if he was injured. But in March 2016, Colorado Prisons Director Steve Hager later told ABC News, the attack was part of the reason for moving him, he added. There were many concerns. The attack was part of the concern. Meanwhile, his surviving victims are still dealing with the legacy of a lifetime of pain or disability as a result of the injuries Holmes caused. Comics fan Stefan Moten, who had excitedly gone to the screen with his brother Lamar, was left paralyzed from the chest down. Speaking to Newsweek in 2017, he said, about a half hour into the film, I saw a gas canister arc high across the screen and over the crowded theater. Shots rang out from the front as I felt a bullet hit me. I called out for Lamar. Days later, I woke up in a hospital, paralyzed from the chest down. For me, there have been surgeries, part of the bullet is still in my spine, and high-tech wheelchairs, and new accessible accommodations, and physical therapy. Despite being insured, he was even forced to launch a fundraising drive to raise cash for medical treatment. At one point, he said his life had been a tough road. Bereaved parents Sandy and Lonnie Phillips, who lost their daughter, Jessica Redfield Gua, in the attack, was still running an organization they founded called Survivors Empowered to help other families affected by mass shootings. The couple recently traveled to Uvalde, Texas after the school shooting there to help the relatives reeling from the atrocity. It's a club that nobody wants to belong to, but once you're part of it, you can't resign. So you might as well become friends with one another and become another type of family. Very little is known about Holmes' daily life in prison. Meanwhile, the survivors are still living with their scars and injuries, and bereaved families are still mourning their murdered loved ones as the calendar turns to July 20, 2022, which is no doubt a sad milestone, making a full decade of their grief. What are your thoughts on this? 
Do you think Holmes will get out? Let us know in the comments below. If you liked today's video and found it interesting, then leave us a thumbs up and do not forget to subscribe to our channel, AF Crime, and click on the bell icon to always be updated with the latest crime content as soon as it's uploaded. Thanks for watching. See you again soon in another crime busting video.